Okay, I, I think I'll get started now. So, hello, I'm Anvesha Das, and I'm currently a senior in high school from Kanpur, India. Um, and today I'm going to talk about computational behavioral science. More particularly, I would be concentrating on my works uh, on understanding emoji usage and their meanings behind them. Um, I attended the Wolfram High School summer camp in 2019. Uh, then I was a part of BELF, Wolfram Emerging Leaders Program 2019, and I've currently been an ambassador for the Wolfram Students Group for a couple months. Um, so my current project actually started at the camp itself, uh, where I looked at global emoji usage, and then later after the camp, I ended up extending it onto what you're going to see today. So with that, I think, let us get started. Um, yeah, so in today's talk, I'm going to cover two of my studies. The first one is very similar to what I um, conducted at the Wolfram High School Summer Camp, which is I studied general emoji usage. Um, now, emojis have recently gained a lot of popularity in computer-mediated communications. Um, and the good thing about them from a behavioral standpoint is that they have the potential to give really useful insight on how public behaves in general. Um, they could also provide insight into um, deeper meanings of how people perceive things, etc. So the first study I'm just going to cover uh, emoji usage at large. So, for example, what emojis are the most popular ones that are used or um, how are they distributed by geographic area, et cetera. And in the second one, I'm going to talk about a way more recent project where I explored how the onset of our pandemic, that is coronavirus, might have affected emoji usage. Uh, the aim with this study was that by seeing how the emoji usage pattern possibly shifted, we might be able to understand if there has been a general shift in public opinion since the pandemic started. So this could actually act as a really useful implicit tool to help us understand public behavior at large. Um, with that, I think I would go on to talk about a few of the general terms that you're going to hear a lot throughout this presentation. The first is what exactly are emojis. Uh, so emojis are unicode characters used to depict non-linguistic expressions like um, a smiley emoji or a heart-based emoji. I listed three of them here. So this is tears of joy emoji, the heart emoji, and I think the face bombing emoji. Um, now the question is why do we use them? Is that they're filled with meaning. So for example, when we're sending a text, we may not know what exact emotion we want to convey, but an, emo but an emoji can help with that. Um, and in this study, across both of the studies, Twitter was used as the platform for obtaining all of the data. Now, the reason for that was Twitter is a microblogging platform, and that means that it allows messages and texts of very short character length, um, which, which increases the likelihood of using emojis in place of long words to express emotions. Um, hence, to study behavior using emoji, Twitter was a great place to start. Now, although there hasn't been much work done about emoji usage in general, um, they're a great tool. And uh, the question then arises, what factors affect emoji usage? Um, which in turn can help us understand these factors by looking at the emoji usage itself. So things like one's age, gender, or relationship type have been known to affect emoji usage, including something called platform diversity, for example, whether we are using Twitter or whether using some sort of other social media. Um, here, um, the study covers how, initially the first one just covers general emoji usage, but in the second one, we explore COVID-19 pandemic as a possible factor for affecting global emoji usage. Um, so next I'm just gonna cover the aims for both of these studies. So the first, as I have mentioned before, was done to explore general emoji usage to set up a baseline. Um, we just wanted to explore what are the dominantly popular emojis used in specific geographic locations. And for the second hand, we wanted to do a more pinpointed approach um, 
we wanted to see if the number of coronavirus cases in a specific area might be affecting how emoji usage is being affected in that region. Um, yeah, so with that, let's go on to the methodology. Now, there were many parts to it. So looking from the technical standpoint, there was obviously the challenge of collecting data and then developing the algorithm to separate out the emojis from any given piece of text. Uh, and then the second one was, what factors do we exactly look into? So first, let's cover the data collection part. As I mentioned before, both of these studies were done on Twitter databases. Um, I will quickly go through the code that was used here. For both of the studies, primarily the code was very, very similar. So I'll just go through one of these. Um, for example, you can see here that I use Service Connect to connect to Twitter. And then I just use a normal query search, uh, filtered them by location, because as I mentioned before, the goal here was to really be able to see emoji usage by geographic locations. So we, we filtered it by the geolocation and then we capped it at 2000 tweets per country. Uh, we had it go through all of the countries. Um, I think there were 249 that Mathematica recognizes and then they were stored onto a local file. Uh, what's important to mention here is that in two of these studies, these two data sets were eight, eight months apart. So one that was collected in June 2019 during the summer program. And then the second was in March 2020, which was um, collected probably just a few days after the pandemic was officially declared. So the aim was to study the initial shocker reaction. Um, with that, let's go on to look into the emoji extraction algorithm. The problem here at hand was to be able to extract emojis from any given piece of text. Because when we're obtaining the data from Twitter, it's all mixed up. We really don't know. And we want to be able to select only the emojis um, and be able to compute with them. Um, now, this was probably the most challenging part just because it wasn't very straightforward. Fortunately, people at the Wolfram High School Summer Camp really helped me come up with this methodology. So how it worked was we first got the original listing of all Unicodes. And then there's a specific range that are used for emojis specifically. So then that was extracted. And then the normal text, all of it was converted into Unicode. Uh, we, had, we also had to convert between UTF-16 and UTF-8 at this stage, which, which caught us up in the beginning. Uh, but after we had that, the task was pretty simple. The task was to match these Unicodes from the original list onto what we had. Uh, and that is how our emoji extraction algorithm worked. So the code that you see here, this is part for the Unicode thing. So this line of code here first gets all of the Unicode data in one place. Then the next part of the codes work to select only the Unicodes that represent emojis. Um, the next part, as I mentioned here, was to match these two. So first, all of the data from the local files that were stored were imported into a Mathematica notebook. Um, then there were some countries that we didn't get the data for. Uh, the query didn't work, so we had to first eliminate that. And then this code right here signifies the matching process, where we match our original listing to the data that we collected. Um, this flowchart here explains the general working of the algorithm. So first we obtain tweets filtered by the geotagged country, and then we change it into its Unicode form. Then the list of Unicode emojis were obtained, then they were matched, and we converted into an emoji database by country. So at this point, it was ready to be computed and uh, we could look into various factors and then actually make conclusions out of this. Um, so yeah, this is this specifically, uh, goes through the methodology that was used for study one and study two. Study one, again, was pretty simple. We just used the database that we generated before for all of the emojis directly. I think it's study two that really requires some clarification here. Um, so we wanted to look into different factors from the emojis that we could extract. So here we looked into three things. The emoji density, which is defined as the number of emojis um, per tweet. And then what were the popular emojis used and what were their related popularity? By related popularity here, we mean what percentage of the total emojis did this specific emoji make up? So for example, if tears of joy is the most common emoji, then what percentage of all of the emojis did this group make up? 
Um, now, I think the reasoning behind choosing these factors is pretty important to go over. Uh, now, behaviorally speaking, these factors could be loosely dubbed as a measure for how sufficient these emojis are for expressing emotions in a given situation. Say, in the wake of a pandemic, do people feel that using more emojis convey their expressions better? Or on the other end of the spectrum, do they think that such a serious situation can't really be expressed by using emojis? So although the emoji density might not seem that deep of a factor, it can actually be used to predict human behavior pretty nicely. And then comparing the specific emoji usage before and after can give us a further insight into any possible differences. This, this on the other hand, is a pretty direct method. Um, next, um, I'm just gonna go over the results briefly. Um, so from the study one, what you see here is an emoji density heat map. Um, how it worked was we calculated the emoji density, which is number of emojis per tweet. So here you can see the code. We got all of the countries, sorted them out, and then this calculates the ratio, which I call here the emoji ratio. And then finally, this maps out the relative usage of emojis. So for example, here, I think um, USA is probably in the middle. Um, and then I think this is Norway or Sweden. Um, they probably use the most number of emojis per tweet. So emoji usage density was used as a factor here. Uh, next, going on to the specific emojis used and the relative emojis. So across the globe, um, the tears of joy emoji came out to be the most popular one. So I think out of uh, 249, around 50%, so I think 102 countries had that as their most popular emoji that was used. Here we just um, got all of the emojis, um, sorted them out nicely and just placed them. So this was also pretty straightforward. Uh, now, going on to the results for study two, this was probably a bit surprising because considering the pandemic, I was probably expecting we would see newer emojis, say the microbe emoji or um, the mask emoji. But what instead happened was I didn't see much of a difference in the actual emojis that were being used. Um, what I exactly mean by that is that, for example, um, if tears of joy was the most common emoji before, it still remained as the most common emoji afterward. There actually wasn't much of a difference. However, an interesting point to note here is that across the first, um, so while we were comparing here, I think, I think I should go back and mention this, is that we divided all of these groups into clusters. Uh, these countries were divided into clusters by the number of COVID cases they had. Again, this was in April. So for example, I think USA was, USA was up with China back then. And so we divided into clusters and then we wanted to see the emoji usage by the cluster because it made sense to correlate it with the current situation of the pandemic. Um, I, so yeah, there were four clusters that were used. So the first three clusters, where there were the maximum number of COVID patients, the relative popularity of the most popular images uh, dropped after the start of the pandemic. So that was probably the most uh, significant finding here. For example, in cluster one, so the one that had USA and China at that time, the tears of jo joy emoji, which was the most popular emoji across all of the clusters, made up around 34.36% of all the emojis used, if I'm not wrong, in the first category, like before the pandemic started. Whereas after the start of the pandemic, it only made up 14.69%. Um, now, this couldn't be a coincidence because a similar pattern was across, like seen across cluster two as well, where initially the tears of joy emoji made up 17.7% of all emojis, uh, whereas afterwards it only made up 5%. So I think the drop is pretty consistent here. So for example, it was 35 before, dropped to 15. The second most popular emoji dropped from 17 to 5. In, even in cluster three, um, there was still a gap, but the gap was slowly closing in. And by the time we reached cluster four, it had almost leveled out. So as earlier mentioned, the emoji usage dropped by 75% for all three clusters in general, um, indicating that the average usage of country, emoji by country, which were affected by the pandemic dropped. So uh, it could be that the first, um, thing that I mentioned when I was talking about the pandemic was that probably people felt that it wasn't sufficient to 
really express their emotions at that point of time. So the pandemic might be a very serious thing that is affecting with their behavior and the emojis are not really sufficient to express that. Um, and then just concluding everything, um, an attempt was made to study general emoji usage pattern throughout both. In the first one, we just established some of the most common ones that were used, um, and these could potentially act as something that we could use in the future to predict public behavior, which was kind of the aim for the second study, where we wanted to explore whether the start of the pandemic had really affected emoji usage, and whether this change or shift in the pattern of emoji usage could really be used to predict any shift in public behavior. Um, yeah, so before I go on with the acknowledgements, I also briefly want to mention the future works that can really stem out of this. So, as I mentioned right in the start of the talk, the factors that affect emoji usage are not really established. So we know that age, gender, or somebody's geographic location might affect, but we don't really know for sure. So I think some really interesting lines or similar projects could be to look at how one's native language affects emoji usage. So for example, some countries or primarily dominant languages um, might be using uh, pictorial representations. They might be using more emojis because it might be sufficient to express um, the right emotion in lesser number of characters. Or another whole range of factors that could be affecting emoji usage is one's socioeconomic factors. So stuff like GDP or their literacy rate, um, they could really give an insight. So I think what I'm trying to encapsulate throughout this presentation was really to look at how emoji usage for a country or different patterns globally could be used to reverse engineer um, the behavior patterns or how you might expect people to um, behave in a certain condition. So I think the aim with the study was to really look at the other side of it. Um, with this, I would just go on to the acknowledgements. So first off, I would really like to thank uh, both from High School Summer Camp, um, my mentor Rory, there were other mentors, Kyle, Philip, and Christian and Mads. I, if any of you are here right now, thank you. Um, the second study was a spin-off to the first one, and I did that independently. Um, I think I'll just go and see if there are any questions, and if there are, then I would take them now. Um, let me figure out where Pathable is. Right, so I don't think there are any um, questions right off the bat, but if you have anything, feel free to put that on the chat or if there was any part you might want me to go over again, I would be more than glad to do that. Oh, okay, we have a question here. So, so why don't you go ahead and ask it? I just see the um, statement here, but I don't really see the question. Thanks, Andy, for joining us. This was great. Uh, no, Faye, we can hear you. I don't think you can be unmuted. Um, or wait, I, I think. Oh, I actually can. Yeah, I just. Oh, did. yeah. Hi. Okay. <laughs> I can hear you now. It's such a cool paper and interesting results and um, super impressed with the creativity and also the results are, are super interesting. Um, I guess the so question much. that I have is, <laughs> in general, um, like when you talk about the usage of emoji, then it's definitely highly correlated with the usage of uh, Twitter in general, right? Like um, yeah. when people use Twitter more, maybe the use of em emoji also um, mm -hmm. gets higher. 
So um, in your study, how do you take into consideration of this factor? Like, do you uh, treat the density and the usage of Twitter in general as a control variable there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually do. So if you see my biggest two factors here were emoji density and then the related usage, which are both uh, taking into factor how many tweets or how many emojis in general we were collecting in the first place. Uh, so like I mentioned, absolutely, I think in this second slide about how different this could absolutely vary between different platforms. So I think the results are definitely dependent on the platform of study that we choose. Um, and Twitter by just like by its character lend definitely has its advantages and disadvantages, but you really don't make a good point here. So I tried to take in stuff that is neutral, uh, which doesn't really um, kind of take the popularity of that platform into consideration, but then that could definitely affect the final result. Hey, does it answer your question? Very really helpful. Thank you, and Wesha. All right. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much you for so joining much. me. Mm -hmm. This is great to have actual people listen to my stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, all right, wait. Oh, thank you, Brenda. Uh, for Richard, yes, I think I will be providing the notebook. I might make a few changes, and I will be uploading the file probably by tomorrow maximum. Yes, the file would be available. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. Wait, we have another question, I think. Okay, now it's Amy saying it's interesting. Thank you so much, Amy. <laughs> okay, there's a question about what was your experience at the summer school? So first of all, I went to the summer camp, which is the place for high schoolers, uh, it was great. It really changed how I look at computation. I didn't even code before I went there. I was just interested in math and human behavior. And going to summer camp really added a whole different skill set that I have um, exploited, if you would allow me to say, after coming back. It's been really great to be able to integrate um, computation into my interests with um, human behavior. And I'm really excited to see how this goes. I mean, if I, if I would be able to do it again, I would definitely do it again. That was my experience at the summer camp. All right, I think I will be ending the meeting now. Thank you so much again for joining me. Um, I would be more than happy to answer any of the other questions you might have on Fafable. Um, okay, okay, we have another question. Let's do that before I end this. So the emoji density map showed the highest emoji density for Kazakhstan. I wonder why that was the case. And to be honest, the answer is, I don't know. I think that was the aim of the study to really understand what factors can affect emoji usage for a different uh, geographic location. And um, this is a segment I would say is not very explored. So there could be so many factors that play into this. Right now I was just looking at um, emoji usage in general and then I looked into COVID as a possible factor. Uh, I have been doing the uh, socioeconomics um, side of it um, outside of this, um, but there haven't been any significant clear cut factors that might be affecting emoji usage. So we're yet to find out. Sometimes it can be pretty erratic and the explanation is not super clear, but I think that is the aim with the study.